You know, there's nothing like a white picket fence to give a garden that all-American look and make it feel really homey. And we decided that's the element that we needed in this small landscape that's going to be our patriotic themed garden for the summer here at the Oklahoma Gardening Studio. We've put up a white picket fence that we've painted with just white spray paint, several coats to make it weatherproof, and it's just a temporary measure in the garden, so we've wired it to some stakes back here, and I think it's going to make a great backdrop for some of these plants that I want to show you. Now down here, we've planted some Eastern Blues variety larkspur, and these are just now starting to rise up, and the stems will ultimately be about this high. That blue will be a great contrast against that white background. We have a white lily coming up from last year when this was an all-white garden, and then right here, we're planting some perennials. This is Adenophora confusa. It's in the Campanulaceae family, such as harebells and bluebells. So again, it will give us that tall, cool blue feeling. Then back along the fence here, we have some pentas. Now you may remember that we featured pentas several times before in our butterfly garden. Butterflies are very attracted to them. These are white pentas. We have some scarlet ones coming in that'll be in our shipment next week of plants, and they'll be interspersed with these. Now down in front here is an easy thing that you can pick up at most any garden center to give you a patriotic feel in a garden. This is three varieties of petunias that we'll be planting in a pennant pattern to give sort of a, a flag look in the garden. Of course the red and white stripe looks very patriotic and we're, then we'll be cooling it down with some blue mariner petunias and some white ones as well. For seasonal color in our red, white, and blue garden, last fall we planted tulips and Typically with Dutch bulbs, it takes a couple of years to get acquainted with how varieties behave in your garden. And this is a really good example here. We have tulips that were planted, and according to the catalog, they were a red variety, but they're more of a violet color this spring. And that sometimes can be influenced by weather patterns, your own soil pH, and just your backyard microclimate. Then back here we have some white ones. Now, it's nice that those came up and sequenced at the same time. Unfortunately, our blue tulips haven't come up yet, and so our red, white, and blue theme there was a little bit of a bust, but tulips have been a bit of a problem for everybody this year due to our severe winter. On down in front here, we have two varieties of dianthus. Now this is dianthus frosty fire, and the name is not indicating that it's a two-tone red and white variety. You always want to check and make sure what you're getting, because sometimes they're not always in bloom when you buy perennials. The frosty fire name comes from the fact that the flowers are deep red and the leaves themselves have a frosty blue appearance. Then next to them over here, we have Dianthus deltoides. This is alba variety, so we're going to have clumps of red and white Dianthus across the front. At the back here, we have some red and white geraniums, and that's another easy plant to find that you can fill in your garden to, to fill in spaces and, and have a red and white appearance. And then to continue our red, white, and blue theme, we have two species of salvia. Now the front here is salvia splendens, and this is the hotline series. They start flowering fairly early on and continue through the season with spikes of bright red flowers. Then back here we have two varieties of salvia farinacea. And one is Victoria, that's the blue variety, and then a white one. And those against the fence I think will be just gorgeous and they'll get fairly tall and bloom for us all season long, which will be just great. Then we have another perennial and then some blue morning glories that will go along the fence here. Then right down in front, we have our Philadelphus, and if you remember last year, or last spring rather, we spent a considerable amount of time pruning this, and it really paid off. All that work gave it an excellent shape. It's coming out with very healthy foliage, and we got rid of all that dead wood that was in the center, so we feel really good about that. And in a few weeks, when it's blooming with white flowers, it's going to be a nice complement to this garden. Down in front, for some seasonal accent, we have some flowering kale and cabbage that is white, and we'll change that out as the temperature heats up. And then over in the shady part of our red, white, and blue garden, we've selected blue lobelia and white and red impatiens. The lobelia will stay fairly low and creeping, and we'll have those along the edge as a border. We'll fill in and back with impatiens, and instead of just doing a checkerboard pattern of red, white, red, white, we'll have islands of white and large islands of red to give it a little more impact. And that's something to keep in mind when you're planning color schemes with annual flowers or with perennials, that you don't want to go with just one single flower 
and alternate. You want clumps of plants to give you a large impact of color. Well, try to go with some kind of color theme in your garden this season. Have fun shopping the garden centers. There's a lot available out there. I know you'll have a good time with it.